Okay, the ProMix 2KE is pneumatically and electrically driven. Uh, all controlled by the advanced display module, which is the ADM, which is the main display that you uh, control the entire unit with. Uh, each pump is individually uh, driven by each by one regulator each on what's in each side. So uh, mostly, you want to have both pressures on each pump about the same. You never want to. You can deviate maybe five psi, five to ten psi, but never any more than that because. Anything beyond that, you end up having to, uh, I'd say, you might trip the alarm if it gets yeah, off well, a little you, bit. You have, over you have over pressurization of one pump versus the other. Yeah. So you know, if you have more pressure on A side, it's going to overshoot its uh, ratio versus whenever, whenever it switches over to the B side. So you'll be off ratio. It has a five percent deviation, but that's if you have it past beyond ten psi. That's probably enough. Yeah. So, and that will give you an error code. Down here, you have the air motors, which are pneumatically driven uh, by uh, uh, pneumatic valves that are inside this, uh, behind this display. Uh, driving, which are being driven by the air motors, are the pump lowers right here for the A and B side. The A side <coughs> pump. Uh, the, the inlet of the A-side pump is underneath, which underneath over here you have a wide screener, which is the, uh, the first filter that it sees throughout the system. So it filters out any impurities or any chunks or trash that might have fallen into the drum. It goes through on the check ball, on the, on the foot valve, and then another check ball on the piston valve. And that's how it creates pressure by just positive displacement. So, Coming out on the outlet over here of the pump, you have the filter there. That filters out any impurities that might have uh, not been caught by the first white strainer right there. From this filter, it goes into the, into the uh, uh, dispense valve block. From the dispense valve block, this is what this is this is where your, your uh, proportioning actually happens on both A side and B side. On the A side, since this is a 4 to 1 ratio system, preset, for every four parts of A, you will have one part of B dispensed. And these dispense valves actuate accordingly, uh, according to the, uh, the position center of where the piston is on the air motor, whether it's up or down. Or, uh, if I remember correctly, it's about 20 cc's per inch of stroke. So that's, that's the A side over here. There's a dispense valve for the paint itself, and there's a dispense valve for the solvent. Same thing with the B side. Same air motor, slightly different pump, and I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, dispense valve for the catalyst hardener, dispense valve for the uh, solvent. Now moving down to the B side pump. This pump is slightly different because it's mainly used for moisture sensitive materials. The inlet of this pump is on the top side versus the bottom, where, this is where that one's at the bottom versus the top. So the Y strainer is back up here on this other side. If you need to catch any impurities or any trash or anything, um, that's where the filter is located. It's always located on the big, big nut over here. You can always take that off, clean off the filter, put it back in there, and then reprime the system. It, so it fills in from the top. It dispenses on the outlet right here in the bottom, which where you have this other filter. Now, one quick fact about these filters, they're always supposed to be hand tight. Never, ever take a wrench to these filters at all because they have uh, Teflon O-rings. So, if you need to, you, you can use a strap wrench. But that needs to be like a plastic or leather strap. Never any, like, not like a chain strap or anything. So, most, but most of the time, you're only supposed to have these hands tight. But use two hands, loosen it up with no pressure in the system. Make sure there's no pressure at all. Yeah. So take that off, clean the filter, put it back on there. So as this, as the system is proportioning, it is actually actuating the suspense valve back and forth. Four parts for this, and it measures and it measures for every pump stroke. So. Four inches would be what? 
20 cc to 80 cc and then it switches over from A to B and it dispenses 20 cc to this and that's how you get your 4 to 1 ratio. After the 4 to 1 ratio it actually goes through here, check valves on each side to prevent the each material from crossing over, cross contaminating to each other and it goes down to the mix block which goes on to a mix tube. And the mix tube has mixing elements inside of it which cross hatch to each other and that's how you get both A and B material to mix down the mixing tube. After the mixing tube you have the you have one ball valve per per line per gun. So you have to make if you're using one, preferably just use the left side which is gun number one. Uh, you have to use two to have both of them open. From here, both guns go to their own respective uh, fluid uh, fluid regulators. Right now, each fluid regulator sits to about 1,000 psi. Uh, that's because we have residual pressure in the system right now. But no matter how much you turn up these pumps, these regulators will keep them at a certain pressure. So if you, even if you have a, a pump and B pump set to 100 psi of air pressure to fluid pressure, these will only allow a certain amount of fluid pressure to flow through. Air regulators up here, air regulator for gun one, air regulator for gun two. These are already preset to about 35, 40 psi. If you need more atomizing assist air, you can adjust accordingly there for gun one and gun two. Same thing with fluid pressure here. Uh, there's a hex nut at the very top of this and you can use a, I believe it's number six Allen wrench. Air assist lever, it's always in the down position when you're filling or flushing. The only time you have to put this lever up is if you're already ready to spray. When you're ready to spray, put the lever up and you have atomizing air activated. When you shut it down, it actually takes that air pressure back down. Coming to the B side barrel over here. Since, this, since the B side material is a lot thinner than the A side, the B side only requires siphon tubes and hoses going to go into the pump. Um, most of the time, the B side is going to be your catalyst and it's going to be your moisture sensitive material, so we have desk and dryer right here with uh, an ind uh, ind indicator window on the right hand side, which shows pebbles. When the pebbles start turning from a blue color to a pink color, then it's time to change out the desk and dryer. It works as a filter to remove moisture from the air that's being sucked into the drum. Moving over to the uh, to the A side over here, since this is your primer, your primer is a lot heavier than your catalyst. Uh, it's a thicker material, higher viscosity. So, that being said, this pump here, this A side pump, needs some assistance to actually siphon the A side material. The primer being so heavy and high viscosity, all the way down siphon tube, siphon hose, and into the pump. So for that, we have this transfer pump. Which is, uh, it's a diaphragm pump that's used for transfer purposes only. So what it does is, it pulls the material from up to the bottom of the barrel and sends it down to the siphon tube and to the siphon hose and into the pump. And this one is already set at around 70 psi. This one will always be higher because it, it, is, it is a one-to-one -one ratio pump. So 70 psi of air will give it 70, 70 psi of fluid. You should never exceed 25. Uh, more. You shouldn't exceed 25 percent of the inner pressure versus the outer pressure on this side, oh, this side of the pump. Never. So that one, I wouldn't worry about that one being too high because uh, the inner pressure for this one is much higher than what the ratio is for that one.